The mission did not go as planned. Razor 6-4 failed to eliminate Jesus Santana. Instead, he fired at a decoy dummy. As a result of the trap, Santana managed to escape. Now, Razor 6-4 and Alpha 9 must obtain information on the real whereabouts of Santana. To do so, they must meet with their emergency contact. Their task is to contact an undercover CIA informant in order to find Santana and complete the unsuccessful mission. The sky is red today. But only in the West. Welcome, gentlemen. Was your mission a success? <sighs> you kidding? It was a fucking trap. We have to establish his location. That son of a bitch can't get away. I know someone who might know where Santana is. How will we find him? I think I can help you with that. Alright, Razor 6 4 and Reaper Strain are back at it again. Deep in some South American jungle with the USB in hand, and we're looking for an undercover operative with La Silla. Should be interesting. There's two lookout towers in the canyon. Each guard has an alarm switch. First deal with the one on the tower in the back. I said it before, but I'll say it again. I wish I had a UAV or some sort of drone to like mark these people. But you know, beggars can't be choosers. You gotta work with what you got. Oh, well, on the bright side, I did get a cooling fan for my laptop, so the CPU should be getting some noticeable improvements here and there in temperature. Oh, temperature-wise. Fan speed is still a bit shitty, and it's still loud, because I believe there is a lot of dust in there. And I still do not have the proper tools to open up the laptop properly and clean it. An alternative I've been doing is just putting the laptop over an AC vent and just letting the air kind of blow inside it. And kind of like moving the laptop around a little bit just to kind of shake it up so I can like knock the dirt or dust loose or whatever's in there. It's causing the problem. But I know I can't really solve the issue until I get her open and see what the hell's going on inside. But you know, until then. It's still gonna have that like <laughs> noise from the fan. Which is still kinda hella annoying. I think half the people in this neighborhood are deaf because he just blasts the fuck out of their music. One second, I'm gonna fuck stopping by. They want to make it painfully obvious that they have a sound system in their car, or that their radios can actually, or their speakers can actually go as high as they can go. I don't understand the fascination with loud music. I mean, come on, I like my hearing the way it is. 
That way I can actually hear people instead of saying, What? What? Huh? <laughs> so like the main reason you're saying what and ha huh every time I speak is because you're probably deaf from listening to loud music pretty much all the damn time. Or in a constant, or if you're in the military, firing guns almost all the time with the right hearing protection. Unless you're in the field. When you're on base, you get hearing protection in the field, not so much. <laughs> I think sight and sound would be a soldier's two most valuable assets. Then smell too. Smell, touch, taste. But actually, sight and sound, because the other one's in. Uh, maybe feel? Kinda. Maybe, I don't know. But sight and sound, definitely. I guess staring at that damn car. It's like boom, 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 boom. You can tell you're in the hood, man, because uh, people don't like their music a lot of shit. If you live in a nice neighborhood, like a rich neighborhood, you don't hear any of that shit, period. Because people respect other people's privacy and, uh, and boundaries. And just like noise restrictions. You can only get so loud <laughs> until a certain hour, and then after that hour has passed, you're like, yeah, you just cut it. Otherwise, cops get involved, and yeah, it gets really messy. Oh, uh, someone else is having a decent conversation besides myself. Hopefully, it has someone to talk to. Hello, it's probably on the phone. Two pass. If you choose to go up, you'll bypass the guard. Your call. Hmm. I bet I have my cake and eat it too. I take out the guard, then I go up. <sighs> I am a Reaper of Souls. Another X on my wall. That ah, shit. <laughs> and I'm stuck. Shit. Stuck in the geometry again. Okay, I gotta knock my way out. Knife. Start knifing. I can't jump, I can't move. I got this thing. That help me out. Just knife. Yeah, there we go. It worked in Soldier of Fortune and it works here. <laughs> oh my god, wow, seriously. <laughs> okay, that's not the mark of my back. <laughs> yeah. Science or game is going to shit. One, you're caught up in the geometry, and the only way to actually free yourself is to knife your way out of a situation. In Soldier of Fortune, I was stuck underneath the 
I don't know what the hell it was called, but uh, I was like stuck there because actually my character height and the height of that object were the same. And so we kind of got stuck in each other, and so I had to knife my way out of it, so I could kind of like push myself away from it. And in here, I applied the same principle, except in a kind of a wedge type situation, so it worked out. But still, come on. <laughs> Getting caught up in the geometry. Now with this, I'm going to be a little bit harsher in regards to criticism because this is actually DLC. And with the DLC, the developers should have, you know, like gone back, kind of like went over some notes and said like, hmm, if this was happening in the main campaign of the story, maybe we should fix this, this, and this so that the DLC would be a lot, would be a whole, like a smoother experience overall. But... Some things they fixed, some things they may have tried to fix and then they couldn't fix, so this is what they get. But you know, it's still fairly decent. I mean, I'm, still, I'm not complaining majorly, but you know, just, just putting it out there, I could be a bit more harsher because it is the DLC. They should have learned some lessons from before. <laughs> Let's see if they did. Well, actually, this game in general on the uh, on PlayStation 3 is actually a remake because the original Sniper Ghost Warrior was actually on PC and the PC version had, to my knowledge, additional levels in which you played as an assault soldier or assault personnel. You know, because I mean, you know in the beginning of the game they had you firing a M16. And the assault personnel actually carried an M16 and they were doing like missions throughout the game and they kind of tighten sniping here and there to kind of make it a whole experience. Tyler, and so, we've got a secondary objective. What? Again? Turns out fucking story here. Truck full of guns behind the bridge. We have to blow it up. This was supposed to be a discreet mission. That's why you have to do it discreetly. You find some explosives in the camp by the river. Use them to blow up the truck. I've got it. On the move. How the fuck do you know they have explosives by the river? I mean, if you know they have explosives by the river, why didn't you go and get it yourself? Lazy sack like of shit. Okay, where was I? Okay, so uh, when the developers ported this game over to consoles, basically it took out all of the assault missions and left all the sniper missions. So, that's why I have Sniper Ghost War. <laughs> PlayStation 3, so yeah. So, technically, if I wanted to, I could have been a lot more harsher, you know. But since it was a port, you know, it's like, you get what you get. Then coming from the PC the console should be a smoother, well, it should be like a, I don't know. I want to say it should be a smoother experience, but it may not be. Because I know coding for the PS3 was a freaking hassle back in the day. And that's why Sony made the PlayStation 4 more accessible to developers. <laughs> you know, to kind of stop pirating. So... Yeah. I know a little bit of history with consoles and developers, publishers, and Careful. Lots of manufacturers, so yeah, from time to time I do kind of give out little tidbits of knowledge, but not much, because it's not the type of channel. <laughs> I'm just here to have fun, shoot shit up, and uh, you know, just go on vacation. Every game I play has a different locale, so different place to kind of hang about, see the sights, take some pictures, probably hit on the uh, local females in the area. Maybe eat some of the uh, local cuisine. Maybe watch some local sports like uh, football, aka soccer. Or some rugby, or some lacrosse. I can't do baseball. No, I can't do baseball whatsoever. The game is too damn long. <laughs> Golf, maybe. To an extent. That guy's like, who the fuck is that over there? Eh, ah, fuck it. <laughs> Here's the thing, if you know something's wrong. No, we don't. 
get that party started. Let's back up. Here's my question. What's the use of sounding an alarm if no one's there to answer it? <laughs> I mean, by then I guess I... Where the hell is everybody? Yeah, there's actually a tower way the hell in the back. On the right side. And this guy's staring in the wrong direction, so he's thinking I'm going that side. <laughs> well, he was pointing to the right, so... I don't know. So, according to where he was standing to his right, he saw someone just drop dead. And yeah, he's going to look towards, like, realistically, if you're, like, in this position, he's going to look towards his left and face the wrong direction where I'm, like, just right down the road. So, uh, it's AI tactics, I don't know. <laughs> sometimes they have tactics, sometimes they don't. Sometimes the AI surprises you. And when they do, <laughs> oh, are you surprised? Now we can take the direct route, which is to walk just. Oh, hello. You see, now he was facing the right direction. You know, some shit was going down. He had his rifle up. Just look at the scope. Try to eye the situation. Then he ended up dead. We are taking a route that we don't. Well, we we don't really need to take this anymore because, uh, you know, just trying to be stealthy for stealth's sake. We already tripped the alarm and we just killed everybody in the area, so uh, this is kind of redundant. But you know. Just to show you that it's there. Besides, I'm not, well, besides, I don't know if there's any more people in the area, so it's better to be safe than sorry. Kind of like what I told this guy last night at the shop, where he's like, You want to purchase a new expensive phone from Apple? And in this shop, if you don't have your shit in a bag more than likely the people at the door are going to ask you a ton of questions that will make you feel uncomfortable so in order to avoid that i'm going to hand you your receipt and give you a bag even though you clearly expressed that you didn't want a bag because i'm like you know what i don't feel like going through unnecessary bullshit and i know you don't want to go through unnecessary bullshit so i'm just going to give you a fucking bag and you're going to take this fucking bag, you're going to put your product in that fucking bag, and you're going to walk your ass out the fucking door without having a fucking problem. Because I'm not here to have a fucking problem. Well, no, I'm cursing for no reason. I like saying fucking. I like saying fuck. <laughs> Especially when you link it and you got like a good rhythm going, it's like, yeah, it's just awesome. Like Joe Pesci taught me that. And again, the stairs are still too, uh, inclined. There's too much of a slant there. Still too much of a slant. Feels like we're reusing assets here. Nice work.
yeah, you would think there would be someone up there, but yeah. Nope. He's actually to your right. He's actually to your right. I swear, Kelly, sometimes it feels like you have two left feet when you slide down these fucking steps. You sense something wrong in the false. Oh, you know he's somewhere. <laughs> nah, I just don't want to fuck with him. If you don't fuck with me, I don't fuck with him. That's my one rule of engagement. The only rule of engagement. Keller's two greatest enemies. Stairs. And I gotta yell shit you for going out going out of bounds. <laughs> Get back to the area! Look at this guy. He's got a lovely little campfire going. Oh, and he's got company. Oh, that's nice. They're having a dinner date. Aww. Having some s'mores by the fire. Telling ghost stories from creepy pasta. The hell is that? Is he making advances towards the other guy? <laughs> oh shit! He's doing some kind of dance. Behold, the mating rituals of a soldier. <laughs> don't ask, don't tell. Dude, they give a lot of animations to the one on the right. For He was ready to go clubbing. He was like, yo, he's out two step, two step, two step. You know, if you think about it loosely, if you look at politics and the way they're, well, American politics, and the way they're color coordinated, Democrats are always blue, Republicans are always red. Now, two famous gangs in, a, in America are the Bloods and the Crips. The Crips are blue, the Bloods are red. So, I was thinking that if a Democrat in a, is in the White House, basically. It's a Crips in the White House. If a Republican is in the White House, a Blood's in the White House. And, you know, but they don't wear necessarily wear the gang colors. <laughs> Maybe with their ties. They kind of represent their gang with their ties. But I was, uh, I was like talking with a few friends a few days ago about this, kind of loosely again. And I was saying that maybe they can get an alliance between the Bloods and the Crips and kind of incorporate them in our military so that our military can act like a gang unit overseas 
and we can start taking shit over, <laughs> expanding territories. Do it like the Brits. The sun never sets on the American Empire. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm, yeah, I think I'm watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm watching footage from Sniper Ghost Warrior Two in preparation of like you know playing through that game, and I think they get rid of that breathing sound effect when you're like looking down scope. Yeah, that is a big improvement <laughs> if they did that. Cause this is. It's like the first couple of times you hear it, it's not annoying, but after, you know, you, you play through the game for a while, it's like, yeah, it starts getting your nerves after a period of time. And then you start looking for a feature or a switch to turn it off. <laughs> Shooting through his backpack, through the arm. If you do it through the arm, you could possibly get his heart. And he's down. <laughs> nice. Kill confirmed. You know, it's amazing how much this place is going to change in a few years with the uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Because it's been a very linear experience to something very open world. With lots of SUVs, apparently. And trucks. Enemy convoy will cross the dam soon. Find cover and wait for my mark to move. Okay. Go Peron. And just wait for them to pass. Enemy convoy is now heading up the road. You are clear to pass. Get across the bridge. This place is okay. Behold, a bridge of spies. Wait, 
for tone. Okay, they're going. Nice. Excellent. So there's only you two on the bridge. Area looks clear enough. I might take the shot. So they're only back. Oh, there is back up. <laughs> they only said one man. One man. <laughs> that to stop me. No, I know what it was. He's the bait. <laughs> That's dirty, man. They did that guy so fucking dirty. <laughs> like, you're the bait. You draw the sniper. Don't worry. We got your back. He won't take a shot at you. We promise, because he'll shoot him before he shoots you. One minute later, he's running in the bridge. Okay, guys! Help me! Help me! <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> <laughs>